all the supply lines. Everything coming in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's your 150? No, no, no. No,
Motion to establish oh. a surplus capital reserve account for, it should be wastewater, not water. Right, yep. Okay. And then at the bottom of the page, Porter Well Driveway needs grading with a D, not it, it fixed It's not mozzarella cheese. It's not mozzarella <laughs> cheese. Yeah. And if you don't get that thing graded by winter, boy, you're going to have a hell of a problem. I think there was no mention of the road that we did, the one thirds, two thirds for the fund, breaking it up to the Woman Street. Okay, Hall. where would you make a motion? Okay. Where, where do you want to play? Well, that was in a minute, so I can't remember exactly where it's from. I just saw that. I remember seeing that in there. Oh, no. Also, I'm looking, I don't see it. Motion is set. This has to do with the reserve account, the admitted account, or actually um, fund balance. Right. I don't see it here. Is there a public investment pool? Huh? A public investment pool? Yeah, admitted. Yeah. That's what it's called. I didn't see that in the way. I don't know if it's taken in the way. Okay. Where would you like to put it? In a minute, somewhere. Anyway. New invoices of purchase orders. Well, I just saw a big wad of them come over here to Clem. I'm working on the pump yard right now. We're, we're communicating back and forth. Okay, but so it's in process. It's in process. I got one more just to add one. to it. Clem, I forgot I had it in there. Um, some parts that I'm going to need to <coughs> do the installation of the bandsaw and a, a rigid tripod stand. That's a rental, right? No, it would be a purchase. Treasurer's report and budget data to date. Okay. Brian, I'm sorry, I got one more thing. It's, we just had, sorry, we had our um, tax flow prevention done, and Scott came in and one of ours failed. Uh, so that's a quote to repair it and then retest. Sorry about that. Which back one of the uh, mechanical room. There's three in there actually. He's going to add one to this. He's coming back to recheck it. Um, but it's one of the two new ones. I saw him last night. Yeah. This is. He did, yeah. Yep. I'm sorry. This is 
ours. It's not ours. Some other no, that's ours at our facility, at the wastewater treatment facility. Okay. What's well, the standard one for backflow prevention correct. that they're requiring? For it's, yeah, everywhere. Correct. Yeah. Golly, the total due is zero. I'll go for that. <laughs> This is in the galley? No, nope, that, that's in the tool crib, in the headworks building. Okay, but it's department. related to sewer. It's related wastewater. To, it's wastewater, correct. Okay, I'm just going to prove this. That's a small change. Now, would you like to look through your stuff to see if there's something else? No, no, no. no. You're right. sure? I'm pretty sure. You're, no, you don't want to pretty sure. Somebody no, has to believe. Okay, looking at the budget, we have some entries already for October, so we should be at approximately 10 twelfths of the year, approximately, and we made a principal payment for a loan on water. We have one coming up on wastewater, don't we? Um, I would think, based on. Expense principal says we have overpaid by twelve thousand five thirty three, but that's because, because it was in the wrong category. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Can't do ten bucks anymore. I can't do it. We're running tight, so we're going to watch. Willie Street. Okay. This gets a little complicated. Um, you remember the last time we were here, we talked about uh, doing a special assessment for two hundred ninety-four dollars per household per person, whatever. Well, Ray, have you gotten in touch with Suez yet? I've been in touch with them. I don't have any information back yet, though. Well, I called a company called Ted Berry up in Livermore, Maine. And <clears throat> I talked to a guy, their specialty is trenchless wa water and sewer line replacement. And he said, he didn't think lining it was a good idea. He said he would recommend we burst the pipe and replace it with an 8 inch HDPE line. And he said it will cost about 60000 for the pipe and about 25000 for the excavating work. Now whether we line it with a sleeve or we pull a new line, it's, we're still going to have to do about that much excavation, about 25000 because you've got to do a pit at the beginning, a pit at the end, a pit in the middle, then you've got to dig up all the service entrances, which is not hundreds, but there's what, four or five up there? Huh? Three houses together. Correct. One shut off for three houses? Well, there's five all together. Is it five, five all together? Yeah, the school's one and then four. It's school's one and then there's three residential. Yeah, there's there's school committed from, from Wall Street? Okay, well, I, I asked the guy, Isaiah, from Ted Berry, please send more information and a proposal. 
because I kind of like the idea of being able to pull the whole line through. An eight inch line, each PPE, you would have to buy new service entrances because they're, the ones they have are not compatible. Well. And obviously, if you've got a six inch corporation, it ain't going to fit on an eight inch pipe. But I kind of like the idea because it's resistant to tuberculation, which is that nasty stuff that's been going on. So I'm going to ask them to go further. And if Suez has something similar, I'd like to hear it. 85,000 to do the job versus 165,000, even with my vestigial math skills, says that's half the price. Good question. What's that? Tony Burson. They use a ladder. They put up a ladder. Have you ever seen um, them roll large boat off land on the sea. They got these big pillows. They use something like that. They run this thing up the pipe and then they super inflate it and burst the pipe. And I said, well, you know, it's cast iron. It's got 78% of its life left. He said, ha, no problem. I could see it done now. I'm happy with it. Huh? I could see it done. Let's put a peg on it and see what it looks like because I've never heard of that before. Never I saw that before. I hadn't either, but I understand Mike Trank is. Yeah, you know, he was the one that said call Pit Barrett. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I, I looked into it, I was kind of surprised. <laughs> Actually, if this works well, I can see us doing this again in the future, elsewhere, but you never know. The theory so, being that pipes are going to have to go to eight inches if we dig them up, supposedly. Yeah. So probably going to have to go to So the new standard. Yeah. I mean, ductile iron pipe, six inch, eight inch, the cost per foot is negligible. But if HDPE is resistive to tuberculation, we want to talk about that. And we'll get more information, we'll pass it along. If you get anything with Suez, let me know. Um, any purchase service. Willie Street. Wright Pierce's proposals for the pump gallon. Uh, this is their contract. Oh, yes. This is the one for 4,500. Yes. Look at one page. Now, no. I have some concerns about it starting off at 5,100. Growing. You know how things are. So I've added a letter on the bottom that says, okay, fine, but they're not to exceed that $5,100 estimate without advanced permission from us. And it's not to be used for any other purpose. Why don't you read the letter? <coughs> I don't think it's necessary to be able to think it's an open checkbook so much as Whoops. we have a budget and we're going to live with a budget. And if something comes up, we need to know about it before they start spending on it. And probably put some burden on that debt for No. Hey, this is our counter. Okay. So are we going to agree to the general services agreement and the letter? I'll make a motion to that effect. Well, we can just say see attached. We all need to sign. We all need to yes. sign one of these anyhow.
going to scan it, send it on to Chris Bird, and do the resets. water to Willie Street residents. But before we do that, uh, Ray, yeah. I'm sorry, there is an individual on Wilkes Street who wants some water tested. Okay. Um, I'll, give, I'll forward the email to you, and if you or someone on your staff can take the sample and send it off to, what is it, Eastern Labs or whatever we use? Seacoast Analytical. Yeah, we don't need to do the toll Okay. We're pretty sure there's no Yeah. 
acceptance of unanticipated funds for RSA 3195B. Now, at the beginning of the year, there was a water leak at General John Sullivan, and it sprayed all over the, the control system. And we had to replace it. Now, legally, well, the insurance company paid up. They paid about 8200 and legally, we can't accept that money, even though it's in the bank and it's sitting there quietly being a little bit of interest. We have to actually formally receive it. And so I will make a motion that we accept the insurance payment as unanticipated funds pursuant to RSA 3195B. And for those of you who would like to know what the law is, that's it. The only thing that really applies is the Final two. I make a motion to accept the point. Second. Great. Okay. It's unanimous. Okay. Anybody have any comments on the agenda item?
come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, Your so name is? Mike Gibbons, Locust Street. Good. So what's happening with the special assessment? Are we waiting for all those things to be returned? Yes. We're, we're trying to get a hard number. And you still anticipate doing this by the end of the year in order to? We hope so. We've got to. OK. Because otherwise, we're locked into March. But then $80,000 is nothing. I mean. Well, it is as a special assessment. Well, no, I'm, I'm thinking about if we had to go with loan and bond council and uh, USDA. At 250000 USDA said, this is not worth it for us. It would cost you more to do the engineering costs than it would benefit you to go through USDA. But if you want to, you can. I said, yeah, let me think about it. Uh, so do you anticipate, what if you're not hearing back from these places, oh, or see. you need more time, Yeah. when exactly do you plan on telling people there'll be a special assessment? It's October, what? Probably by the next, at the very latest, at the next meeting, which is the 30th. And you have to collect all that money by the end of the year in order to do work? Yes. During the holidays, so? Uh, what are our choices? Wait till March. March. The other choice is wait till March. Or just let people know now. Well, we could do that. If we want to do it as a special assessment, it would be between now and December 31st. However, that I get that. Out. I guess I'm just recommending that perhaps you should let the towns or the district people know that's a possibility and it's coming. I know you can't tell them how much until you figure it out, but send it's, it's nice to have hard numbers. But of course, it out. Is, but it's been two weeks. Yeah, but two weeks the last for contracting meeting. is very. Two weeks for contracting is a very short period. But we've also I know, but we did the deadline last time. I guess I'm just wondering what's the plan. Do you the, the plan is to get is to we try to do, which is get the hardest information we can, and then proceed from there with advice of the district members. I mean, if we wanted to, we just say, no, oh, what the hell? We're going to do an uh, $80,000 special assessment, and if we're high, great. If we're not, well, too bad. Well, we'd like to have a hard number. I understand that, but since I've been coming to the meetings, it's a bit of a PR problem with the three of you and the commission. Well, uh, the PR problem is not something we're going to solve tonight. And What I'm suggesting is that doing it like that and letting people know later rather than the potential is there. If there was a website up that I could go to where you could mark or you could let people know, it's unless you come to the meeting, you won't know. Um, I just don't know if that's fair. Our experience is less than half of the district members use faith, social media. They, they don't. They read the paper, um, they talk to their neighbors, and sometimes we send out mailers, which are very expensive. So... And including websites as social media? Yes. Maybe you could use our robocall. Most people I are I can calls. tell you, uh, let's see, um, none of those are here, none of those people are here. Robocalls drive people crazy because when it's telemarket or not more, more yeah, important know. information it's, about your water. Who is this about? You know, it's it's in the area and it looks like it's from Romsford. I'm not answering it. That's what robocalls, calls, you know, scammers have done to robocalls calls and the utility of robocalls. calls. Well, we have five hundred um there's five hundred and fifty meters. Um, so the bill's 539 last time. Yeah. Okay. We could do a post on <coughs> We could do a what? Post on Send it out. 37 cents each plus printing costs. It, it, 
It's actually cheaper to do EDPVM. Every door nail. But that's made up. It's actually cheaper. Now, you got to share. Uh, uh, okay. I just wanted to piggyback this question. It's just, so forgive me, Mike Robinson, 12 Bowie Street. I don't know who's taking notes. But, uh, uh, so I missed a few meetings in the past. That, so uh, special assessment, does that mean like the residents would be billed for whatever the project costs? It would just be averaged out over the number? One shot, a one shot cost. Okay. So it would be one whopping payment, a couple hundred bucks. Oh. It'd be a interesting. Yeah, I understood. Yeah. So we said what five hundred or so, six hundred ratepayers in the district. Five hundred thirty-nine. If if we did it by meter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, in your minds, what's the kind of the timing on the, the payback, or like, are, we, are people expected to pay right away? Because I understand what he's saying. Yeah, within thirty days. Yeah, with, with the holidays coming, you know, if that's we're going to be hit with a $500 yeah. bill, you know, it would be nice to know that now versus right. later. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The other, the other plan you had was what? $295. And this is like 160 if we do the Craigslist replacement. Okay. The, the line burst and replaced with an English pipe. I want to be there when they burst. But I really do. I want to so And when you've got another engineering firm telling you to use this stuff and it works, that's kind of that's kind of a good recommendation. Yeah. No, I, I I'm glad to see we're pursuing options. I'm glad to see that there's some progress down addressing Willie Street. That it's yep. encouraging to hear. Thank you. Yep. Your name? Uh, Peter Morganelli, uh, 21 Willie Street. Right. Just a question on. Um, if we did that method with bursting the pipe, what would the timeline be on? Would it be sometime next year that we would do that? I, I, I want to do it. You know, when, when you get that bill for that assessment, I want you to see that pipe going in at the same time. Okay. But I can't predict things like We would try to do it as soon as possible because, frankly, it needs attention. And people have said, we want you to address this as soon as possible. And so it would be like a week without water? or would be... we're, we're hoping for more like a day or two. Oh, okay. Just curious. Thanks. I mean, these guys, you know, they're, they're going to do all their pits, they're going to run the line through, burst the pipe, then they're going to pull the HTPE through, and then they're going to get into the pits and start connecting the houses. Now, that's ideal. Does, it all, does the ideal always work? No. But, you know, we may have to run fire hoses from house to house to provide water and interconnect. No, no, we do it. We've done it. It's done before. In the school? Same thing. Surprisingly. They'd be without water for the day? We would probably backfill because they have a hydrant and we could go directly from the hydrant right to the school with a fire hose. I don't believe they can have school without water. Yeah, running water. water. Not running water. Yeah, we'll be running water. Like every facility in the building. Yeah. Every. Seriously? Yes. We just hook up to the main. Yeah. Okay. They've got to have. They do it over a meter just stand quite frequently. They've yeah. got to have a standpipe somewhere in the building. And you just run the fire hose from the hydrant to the standpipe, open them both up, and you've got water. How big do you think the line is from Lily Street to the building? Not that big. I would be surprised if it was two inches. And a three-inch fire hose is bigger than a two-inch. Is there a difference?
Did you have another question? I do question. have a question. <laughs> how have you determined how you're going to do the assessment? There was quite a bit of disagreement at the last meeting of how that was going to be done. What is the decision going to be? We're not committed to anything at this point. How can you say everyone's going to get a bill for an assessment if you're not going to even tell us how they're going to be calculated? If I'm going to be charged for three units, or Clem is going to be charged for one unit, that's really not as relevant as we're going to have an assessment. It is on making sure that everyone is fairly charged. Well, the fairly charged would be if you need it. Or usage. Well, or usage. We, we haven't come to the point of modifying the rate system to a usage basis. This is a special assessment mm -hmm. in a pre-existing rate structure. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be somewhat novel. But if someone hasn't got a usage at a particular meter right now, you're saying that person is going to have to pay the same amount as the one who has been using 15000 the If there's theory, no usage. In the theory of that, because they are connected to the, to the system, mm -hmm. they're going to have to pay the special assessment, even if they only use, say, a 1,000 gallons. Or less. Or less, mm -hmm. but they're connected. It's mm -hmm. the same as electricity. Even if you only use 10 kilowatts a month, you still pay the meter charge. It's, a, it's sort of the minimum charge you have to pay. Okay. I still, as a comment, I still don't see that as equitable, but so I just wanted to mention that because I did a lot of thinking after I left and I still don't see it. Why it's not by units? Let me let me explain to you part of that. Having owned property in other towns and cities, I know for a fact that that in other towns and cities you pay by what you use at the meter. At the meter, so it doesn't matter if you have a four apartment or a single family house. Rollinsford, for some reason, in fact, I know the landlord group was looking into it particularly several of the people downtown. And they were looking at actually suing the district because of that, because they were paying a disproportionate share of the water and sewer. Because you're charged for sewerage. For example, in, in Vern's case, he's got a three unit. But he's only using as much water as a single family house is. And because of that, he's paying as though he has three separate houses at the minimum rate, whereas you don't pay electricity based upon what everybody else does. You pay electricity based upon what you've got. No other, no other city or town around charges a flat rate. It's but what I just heard. There's a fixed. Can I yeah. comment on that? What yeah. I just heard was we're dealing with a current process of payment or being charged, and the current is by unit. It is not by meter, correct? No, it is by meter. That's if, right. if I use it, then listen. why are you paying three times? Because it's per unit plus. I I, I use seventeen thousand gallons in my last bill. Seventeen thousand gallons. Okay. Which is over the fifteen. But that's for three units. Now I'm going to have to pay for two thousand gallons. What's that? The above it's rate of six sixteen, six dollars and Well, just so you understand, so you have an allotment of forty five thousand gallons yes. because there's a three multiplier on your home because yes. it's a three family property. Yes. So but just you're to, only using. But that's just so he has, just more, so yeah. Mike has all the information. Yeah. You know the, the reason why you didn't get an excess charge is because you have 45,000 gallons right. of water that can be used. Right. Because our, our billing system, actually, if it's a single family home, it's 15,000 in a flat rate sewer. If it's a multifamily, it's the flat rate times your, times your multiplier, which is the number of units. Right. So I think that's where the conversation is going. Is there no multiplier on this special assessment? What? No. Well, it's all theory right now. It's two theory. of the commissioners have multiple units. Again, you're running into a, Wait a, minute. It's a still PR theory. problem. We haven't made a final decision. No, I'm just I'm trying to so. get input. 
because okay. last time we disagreed so much, I wasn't sure you were quite hearing. I heard you. Okay. I still do. And what I'm saying now is with the PR problem with this commission, I would take that into consideration when you make this decision. Okay, I'll tell you what. Do you know our email address? No. Okay, it's commission singular. Okay. At Rollinsford Walker Sewer dot org. And why don't you write up a proposal on what would be an equitable way to handle it? Water and sewer, or just no, water and sewer? No, water, sewer, yep. dot org. No conjunctions. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, my God. Come on, Come on folks. No? Come on, dig. Find something. Well, so a point of clarification, and maybe I need more information. What does the laundromat pay? That's one meter? They, they pay a commercial rate, they pay per gallon. I believe it's per gallon, a thousand gallons? No, a laundromat's in a multi-family building. That well, no, a laundromat separate. is built separately. No, that whole thing is one right. No, the laundromat you're is kidding. built separate. Well, right. no, I guess you're not kidding. I mean, I'd have to double check it, but... I seem to remember they had to put in a special meter because it was There may be a special meter. There might be. We'll find out. Is there, 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 is there a commercial rate? There is. Yes. There is a commercial rate. The mill pays a commercial rate. I've done a single The laundry mat's always been separate. It's so on a separate unit. From the apartment. Okay. okay. I just I don't know if they're not billing them separate. Yes, they are. I don't know if they're in my head. Probably. Yeah. It's and so separate. all the apartments there have one meter or multiple? <coughs> one meter. One meter. But all the, the new, new apartments paid. have one per unit. unit for all the new ones. The new so they have a the multiplier of how many how many units are in that building? Everybody has multiple. The people with all the apartments that are next to the yeah. on Front Street. Front Street, aren't there yeah. multiple Carol units Mitchell. there? Yeah, Carol Mitchell. Okay. Yeah. She's got a however many units there are times, you know, fifteen thousand, she pays that right. Okay, so for that property, she'll pay as much as I do. No, she has each, one meter. Each unit will pay as much as you do. Yeah. Well, that's not that's what not. you were, that's contradictory. To what you said saying they had one structure it. The apartments above Black Bean Cafe. Yes. They are have. charged as if they were single units, single houses. Okay, so if there's 12 apartments up there. It's okay. 12 times the charge for the 15000 And so is that because they have 12 meters? I thought you said no, they have one meter, but they're... So I the special meter, admit, I, I guess what I'm saying, meter, for the special meters. assessment, that building and that number of apartments... We haven't settled on how we're going to do the special assessment. Okay. You're going to suggest that. Well, I don't know very much about it. I don't even know how we do it. I'm just saying that the approach to how we pay for water and sewer is one way. What I heard you say before was, it's current, but we're going to go to meter when right now it's not by meter. We're proposing. We're not. We haven't made a final decision, and we have a final line. Okay. All right. But I think what you're, if I may, I think what he's saying is if you have 15 units out there, they're going to pay the same thing as one who has one meter at a house because you're you have a you have one meter. How can you not? No. You're going to pay the same as I do as a single person's no. house. If you've got 15 units in a building, it's one meter. Yeah. But you're charged as if you had 15 individual houses. Not on the assessment, though, is what we're saying. You're basing it on meter. You would be charged mm -hmm. one okay. assessment, for, you're, just like you're I You're mixing up assessment, the special assessment, with how we bill okay, currently. So in the theory of what you suggested, going by the meter, how much would he or she be charged for the portion of it 
versus what I'm going to be charged as a single You're going to be charged, say, 160. Okay, and how much is they going to be charged? 160. My in point. That theory, in that <laughs> in my theory. Point. No, you keep confusing what are we charging? I'm, charge I'm not now. confused. I, we we just confirmed it. On I understand that. Yeah. but If you follow that If process, 15 families in 15 units use one meter, those 15 families are going to split the 160 that I'm going to have to pay as a family one. Yeah. But only on that How is that fair? How, how is it fair that a three unit pays with three single women in it, pays and uses with 4,000, 5,000 gallons last month, uh -huh. and they pay 15,000 times three, as though they're three separate houses. You should be charged based upon your usage, because the real usage is not the water. Okay. The real usage is on the sewerage. Well, currently, that's that's wait, 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 wait. There's billing rates, theoretically, we're looking into, not finalized, a usage method, like Dover, Summers, Worth, Rochester, mm -hmm. just about every other city in the right state. Then there's the special assessment. Right. Separate issues. Agreed. Yeah, we haven't come to a final decision about how we're going to do it. That's right. why and, I'm, and saying I'm saying that the charging right now is one way. And what I'm hearing with the special assessment is you want to no, approach how we charge. You no, know, I'm, I'm saying there is one way. If you want to change to usage, that's fine in the future then everybody gets charged by uses, but currently they get charged by unit. Yes. So you can't well, just change how you're going to approach the special well, assessment. It's yeah. still a special assessment within this way of charging people for water and sewer. Why don't you write us a proposal of how you would handle it? What your ideal would be? It would be to charge the way we charge for water and sewer now. Okay. Divide it that way. I don't know that I need to write a proposal for that, Vern. I think that's... Well, yet we're also getting complaints. I've had several of my neighbors say, why the hell should I have to pay for a problem on Willie Street? I've already had that. I know those people... Absolutely. That being said, I'm going to turn this off. I now make a motion by roll call vote to include a non-public session pursuant to RSA 91 I said A colon three Roman numeral two A in parentheses personnel and ninety one A colon three two C matters that would affect the reputation of a person other than a member of the board. We can trash our reputation, it doesn't matter. And legal issues pursuant to RSA ninety one A colon two Roman numeral one B. I made the motion. Second. It's been seconded. Huh? Okay, it is unanimous. We are non public. We will, when we're done non public, we will come back, announce generally what we talked about, and then we will adjourn. Next meeting is October 30th. We do not wear masks.
cara have snacks.